Good day guys! Welcome back to our channel. This is Art. If you are new to our channel, our channel is all about photography, love, and travel. And welcome back guys for another episode of our Photography Basic Series. If you haven't watched our episode 1 and 2, I highly suggest you do so. And I will put the links on the description box below. And today is episode 3, The Exposure Triangle. Hello guys, welcome back. Today I will be discussing probably the most important topic when you are starting photography. This is the exposure triangle. Don't worry guys, this is very simple. The name triangle simply means there are three points. These are points that control the right exposure of your photographs. Just a review guys, exposure means the amount of light that reaches your camera sensor or your film. It is a crucial part of how bright and how dark your picture appears. For example, this is underexposed. This is an overexposed photograph. And this is a picture with the right exposure. And there are three major points in the exposure triangle. The shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. Nowadays, many cameras have intelligent auto modes. Most of the time, you don't have to think about exposure triangle and how to properly expose your photograph. The camera will do it for you. You just have to concentrate on your composition. But there are lots of instances that auto mode simply cannot make our desired result. And uh, this includes high, high speed photography, low light photography, creative photography, long exposure photography, shallow depth of field portraits, and many more. Auto mode works best when you have good lighting condition. They are good for doing snapshots for your family and general portraiture, documentary, and still photography. But if you set your camera into manual mode, you have the freedom to adjust the exposure triangle components. So now, let's get started. Our first lesson will be aperture. A wider aperture or lower F number means more light will pass through the lens simply because the opening is larger. And narrower aperture or higher F number allows less light to reach the sensor. You may compare aperture to your eyes. If you open your eyes wider, you see more light. And if you squint, you see a darker picture. Makes sense, isn't it? Also remember, the depth of field is the byproduct of aperture. Narrower apertures or higher F numbers make or create a larger depth of field, allowing more of the scene in focus. For wider aperture or lower F number, creates a narrow depth of field which can help isolate the subject from its background. It is one of the greatest compositional tool at your disposal. Think about portraiture. To make it simple and short, if you want everything to be in focus, you have to choose a narrow aperture or a larger F number, probably 7.1 or higher. And if you want to isolate your subject from your background, you choose a wider aperture. Wider aperture creates the bokeh effect. Many portrait photographers use wider aperture to isolate their subject. Now for lesson number two. Lesson number two is for the shutter speed. 
the shutter speed is a measure of how long the shutter remains open and thus how long the sensor is exposed to light. Faster shutter speeds give the sensor less time to collect light and thus result in a lower exposure. Slower shutter speeds allow more time for the sensor to collect light and result in higher exposure. So, if you want to capture fast subjects, all you have to do is increase your shutter speed. For example, you are shooting a running man. Using 1 over 50 seconds shutter speed will result in a blurry picture because the shutter speed is not fast enough to freeze the action. Increasing your shutter speed to 1 over 2000 of a second will likely to freeze the motion and capture the subject in sharp condition. Higher shutter speed freezes motion but captures less light while using slower shutter speed captures motion blur it also captures more light now for the third point of the triangle the ISO ISO controls the sensitivity of the camera's sensor to light increasing the ISO essentially allows you to work with less light for example you are shooting outdoors in broad daylight an ISO level of 100 is enough but when you are start shooting indoors late afternoon to night time you have to increase your ISO to about 500 to 2000 or even more but there is a negative effect of increasing the ISO increased ISO results in increased noise and less detail now you know the three components of the exposure triangle now it's time to make them work together to make the desired exposure these three components must work with each other first you have to check these three items I will give you three check items first is you have to ask what is the lighting condition number two what is the subject and its movement number three what is the desired output so for this first example we will be shooting a walking man on a sunny day we want to take a sharp photo of the man and the background and the photo should be clear and bright so let's get back to the check items number one what is the lighting condition the lighting condition is bright so number two what is the subject and its movement? The subject is a man walking. So number three, what is the desired output? The desired output is to have a sharp photo of the man with its background. So first, set the ISO to the lowest possible number. Usually, I set my ISO to ISO 100. Then, set the shutter speed to a higher number to capture motion. Since the subject is walking, a fast shutter speed of 1 over 500 of a second or higher is preferred. The faster the shutter speed, the better. Then, you want the background to be clear and sharp. So you may want a smaller aperture. So I suggest or recommend having an aperture of f7.1 to f10 this is usually enough so now try your settings if the subject is a little bit dark you may try shooting at a slower shutter speed but remember if the shutter speed is very slow you will have a blurry photo always remember guys if you want a brighter photo decrease the shutter speed increase your ISO and choose a wider aperture and if you want a darker photo decrease your ISO decrease your shutter speed and choose a narrow aperture ISO is your last element to adjust as I said earlier increasing the ISO results to higher noise so it is best to set your ISO at the lowest number 
But there are times that you have no choice but to increase it. Often, when working in low light conditions, you will find yourself at a point where you are using the widest possible aperture and the slowest shutter speed you can use to stop the action. At this point, your only choice is to increase the ISO. The lens cannot physically open itself any wider and as discussed earlier, sacrificing sharpness for a slower shutter speed is rarely advisable. I would rather have a grainy picture with well-defined subject than a smoother image but with less detail and much blur. Always remember that these three elements work together to generate an exposure value. That means that you can always manipulate one setting without having a direct impact on one or both of the other elements of the exposure triangle. If all else fails, you have to learn how to use artificial lighting to properly expose your photographs. And if you are shooting outdoors, you have to choose the right timing before taking a photograph. Or you may use tripod if you are shooting slower shutter speed and in low light conditions. This will greatly reduce camera shakes and blur. That's it guys, I hope you learned something from our episode 3 of our basic photography series. I believe that this is the most important lesson a beginner photographer should know and everything else you will learn in practical shooting. Photography is a skill, you need lots and lots of practice to be better. Congratulations guys! After this episode, this will be the start of your photography journey. Stay tuned as I will flash some photography cheat cards for beginners. I advise you to take some notes because this will become very handy when in times you have doubts and you have some confusions. Thank you guys for watching. Watch out for the future episodes of our basic photography series. Please subscribe to our channel and please don't forget to click the notification bell to be notified on our future uploads. See you guys, keep creating memories and God bless. This is the exposure triangle. You probably heard this term and know this is not a geometry lesson. Okay, okay, I'm not good in uh, making jokes. So let's get back to our topic. <laughs>